بسم الله والحمد لله حمد قدير طيب مبارك فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما قديرا إلى يوم الدين عما بعد يا عباد الله as we want to remind ourselves with the reminder بإذن الله تعالى we want to make dua for our brothers and sisters that is facing this tragedy that is taking place. Allahum al is al Islam wal Muslimin wa adilat al Sharki wal Mushrikin. Oh Allah, raise the standing of Islam and the Muslims and degrade the standing of the of Shirk and the Mushrikin. Allahum surah al Muslimin fi Palestine wa fi kulli makan. Oh Allah, help the Muslims in Palestine and in all places around the world. اللهم المسلمين اللهم صر المسلمين في الفلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم صر على عدوك وعدوهم oh Allah help and support them the Muslims and gain victory over your enemy and their enemies we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve and to heal to cure those who have survived those who have or those who are still living to protect them, to cure them, and to provide from them, for them, and to make it easy for them, and to assist them, and to aid them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his aid. Naam ya ibadullah. As we want to remind ourselves with cooperating with humanity for justice, those individuals those individuals who have committed this crime of genocide against humanity. It is upon the people to speak up. It is upon the people to speak up. It is upon the communities at large to cooperate with each other and to condemn this senseless behavior. So Islamic calls for Muslims and non-Muslims to cooperate with one another in good, to cooperate with one another, and these good deeds and justice and mutual benefit for humanity and mutual benefit for humanity. So it is mentioned, Al Talha Ibn Abdullah reported the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Certainly. Certainly, I had witnessed a pact of justice in the house of Abdullah ibn Jud'an that was more beloved to me than, than a herd of red camels. If I were called to it, if I were called to it now in a time of Islam, I would respond. And this, you can find this in Sunan al Kubra, and this is graded to be Sahih li ghayri. In another narration, it is mentioned certainly, I had witnessed a pact of justice. In the house of Abdullah ibn, ibn Jud'an, which if I were called to it, if I were called to it now in the time of Islam, I would respond, make such alliance in order to return rights, the rights of the people, that no oppressor should have power over the oppressed. And this is rated, this is al Dalail, Dalail. And this is rated to be Sahih. Ibn Abi Hashim or Ibn Hisham, he described the nature of this pact, saying they promised a pledge that they would not find any oppressed person among their people or among any else who entered Mecca except that they would support him. They would stand against whoever oppressed him until the rights of the oppressed were returned. So it is upon the people to speak out against oppression because you see in this day and time that those who are being oppressed that the media is quiet about they're quiet about the muslim being oppressed they're quiet about this is actually happening to the muslim that the muslim is the one who is being raped and being bombed and being killed that this is actually happening to the muslims those who are being oppressed. But they are not 
mentioning this affair, but rather in Islam that we stand for justice, whether they be Muslim or not. That justice is that which is important. It is mentioned in Islam, justice is the universal right of all human beings, regardless of their race, religion, or gender. It is one of the most fundamental purposes and objective of Islamic law. And this, it is called Muqasid al-Shari'ah, Muqasid al-Shari'ah. And we can mother mention this term, Muqasid uh, al-Shari'ah, it is It is explained that this Muqasid al-Shari'ah, al-awwal, from the first matter, the term Muqasid, in the Arabic and the plural to the word Muqasid, which refers to a purpose. It refers to a purpose, an objective, a principle, an intent, or, or an end. So this Muqasid, this purpose and its objective, it is mother to be just, to be just with the people. It is mentioned, Muqasid al Sharia, or the Muqasid of the Islamic law, or the general objective of Islamic legislations, which consists of the deeper meanings and inner aspects of wisdom consideration by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and areas and circumstances of legislation. They include the general characteristics of the sharia of the of the law. So the muqasid, the aim and the objective, ya yuhannas, it is as we want to describe this affair, this muqasid, the aim and the objective. It is mentioned necessity are essential elements for human beings. They, the, the, the absence of these elements may cause harm and damage to human life. The examples of necessities such as shelter and such as food and clothes. This is a necessity for humanity. The necessity are further classified by the ulama. They're classified by the scholars of Islam into five elements of preservation. The objective the other of the Madha Islamic laws is mainly to protect these five elements from any harms. These preservations are known as to to preserve or Madha to protect or to protect the faith, to protect the faith, the religion, to protect the deen of the person. Naam, so this Muqasid al Shariah, it came to protect protect the, the faith or the deen of the individual and it came to protect the life or preserve the life of the individual and the lineage of the individual and it also came to protect or to preserve the intellect, the aql and madha and it also came to protect the mal, the property of the person. We're not just talking about the money but rather the property that which the person he owns. So, Islamic came to preserve life. It, it came to preserve life. And so it is mentioned, Ya ayyuhan nas, the sharia, general rules and specific proofs that it indicates that the all-purpose principles of Islamic legislation is to preserve the social order of the communities and ensure their well-being. That it came to preserve the communities, whether the communities be Muslim or non-Muslim. That Islam, it came to preserve this and honor it so that the people can live amongst each other in harmony and respect. Naam ya ibadullah. And it also, and it came to preserve the social order of the communities as we mentioned and ensure their well-being to make sure that the people are living safe and comfortably. Explicit textual
poster proofs confirm that the overall obje objective of the Sharia is to remove corruption and all kinds of yani facade. So it is mentioned the righteousness intended and praised by Allah Azza wa Jalla. It is not confined just to beliefs or rituals or worship or worship or acts of worship. Instead, it also includes people's worldly conditions and social affairs, as Islam addresses both individual and community experiences as well. So this muqasid a sharia, it came to preserve and it came to mother to care about individuals conditions and their social affairs and as well as the community islam then addressed purifying the human physique and uplifting the human soul so individuals causing corruption and facade on the earth killing innocent people muslim non-muslim نام يا أيها الناس وكذلك يا وكذلك and the second affair of when the مقاصد الشرعية is formalized as a body of knowledge in Islamic science مقاصد الشرعية in its true essence and entity is part of the شرعية it exists with شرعية itself and it has no beginning and it is not subjected to any changes or evolution. In other words, the Muqasid Shari'iyya is the divine purpose and objectives that Allah has put in His Shari'iyya laws and rulings. So we want to just bring this affair of this Yani al Muqasid of weighing and looking at this affair of the affairs of the people, their well-being, their health, the environment, the community at large. This is an important matter. So it is mentioned, Ya Ayyuhal Ikhwa, that Ibn Hisham describes the nature of this he mentions that As we already discussed this affair, but we are moved from this. This affair, as described by Ibn Hisham, describes the nature of this pact. I believe we mentioned this. That they would stand against whoever oppress, and they will return the right of oppressed of the oppressed. So this is this is Yani that which Everyone should be upon that which is ma'roof. Yani, we've been commanded to enjoin that which is ma'roof. And to shun or to discard that which is munkar. That which is ma'roof, it is known, yani, uh, by the intellect, that this is something that is right and praiseworthy. This is something good to do. And this is something that is right to do. And this is something that is known from amongst the people from amongst the community at large. This is what the people is upon of that which is well known of doing good, all that which is good, al-ma'roof, and to discard or to speak out, to shun, to rebook that which is the munkar, that which is known, it is known that this is bad. It is known that committing crimes, it is bad killing people it is bad it is known by the intellect by the soul that commit these acts that this is wrong in a society it is known that this is wrong killing innocent people and robbing them and raping them and torturing them so the sharia came to preserve and to protect mankind in islam justice is the universal right of all humans it is the universal right of all human beings regardless of their race their religion it is one of the most fundamental purposes and objectives of islamic law as we mentioned he mentions he made clear 
بيان سبحانه بما شرع بما شرع بما شرعه من من طريق من طرق أن مقصود مقصوده إقامة عدل بين عباده وقيام وقيام الناس بالقسط فأي فأي طريقا استخرج بها عدل والقسط فهي من دين ولست مخالفة له أقام قال رحمه الله تعالى So he mentions that Allah Azza wa Jalla has made clear in his law that the objective is the establishment of justice between his servants and fairness among the people. So whichever path leads to justice and fairness is part of the religion and can never oppose it. This source, you can find this in the Turuq al-Hikmiyyah. Since justice is a universal right, Islam encourages Muslims to cooperate with non-Muslims in agreements like the Hilf, the Hilf al-Fudul, in order to protect people from injustice, return the rights of the oppressed, and perform any kind of charitable work that benefits humanity as a whole. Perform or give that which يعني, the people need, whether they be Muslim or non-Muslim. This is from the affair of Ma'roof. This is from the affair of Mukhasit al Mukhasit al Sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in the Quran. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالْتَقْوَى وَلَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Cooperate in righteousness and piety or do not cooperate in sin and transgression. وَإِبْنُ كَثِيرٌ رَحِمَهَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He mentions يَعَمَرُوا تَعَالَى إِبَادَهُ مُؤْمِنِينَ that Allah Azza wa Jalla commands his faithful servants that to cooperate in good deeds. ماذا بمعاونة على فعل الخيرات وهو براء وهو برو وترك منكرات وهو تقوى ويحن وينها وينهاهم and he mentions rahimahullah that he said it is upon the faithful servants to cooperate in good deeds <coughs> which is righteousness and to avoid evil deeds which is which he prohibited subhanahu wa ta'ala to avoid evil deeds which is prohibited to avoid evil deeds also which is taqwa he prohibits them from supporting one another in falsehood and cooperating in sinfulness and unlawfulness and this is tafsir al-quran and kareem nam ya nas some of the pre-islamic alliances were nullified by islam such as those that were based upon vulgar tribalism, sin, transgression. However, the Prophet Sallallahu continued to make pacts based upon justice well after the immigration to, Med to Medina. And the Asim reported, I said to Anas ibn Malik, that the Prophet Sallallahu declared that he declared there was no pact, there was no pact in Islam. And Anas radiallahu anhu, he said, قَدَ حَلَفَ نَبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بَيْنَا قُرْعِيشِ والأنصار في دار في داري. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم made a pact between the Quraysh and the Ansar in my house. في دارية. وفي صحيح مسلم وفي صحيح بقاري. والنو النوي رحمه الله تعالى. He mentions the inheritance, the inherited pact. And what the law prohibits have been annoyed, annulled. And as for a pact in obedience to Allah, 
and supporting the oppressed and brotherhood for the sake of Allah, then it is a matter to be desired. This is al muhasit This is the muhasit Shariya. This is that which is desired. This is the objective, is to come together, to aid and to assist, to support one another upon that which is known to be good and wholesome. So this affair of the Muhasid Shariya as a branch of knowledge that consists of his terminologies and various topics. And also, as we mentioned, number three. What are the classifications of the Muhasid al Shariya? The Muhasid al Shariya is classified in various ways according to this affair. As it is mentioned, a necessity, which is the traditional classification. And as we mentioned, the rule and aim and the achieved purposes. And the scope of people included in this purpose and the purposes. And the level of university, universal, universal, university of the purposes. And it is mentioned that it has three levels of necessity can be to, to it can be divided into three categories. The first of them is the durura, or rather dururiyya, dururiyat, the essentials, the hajiyat, the needs. And it is mentioned the embellishment, tahsiniyat, the essential masalih, aduriyya, that which is essential, or the five fundamental objectives of life, as it is mentioned that Islam it came to preserve or to protect the faith. It came to protect the life, the intellect, and the lineage, and the wealth. These are seen as absolute requirements to an individual's survival and spiritual well-being to the extent that their destruction or collapse would precipitate or precipitate yani holes and demise of the standard of order in society. It would cause corruption and facade in a society. So the Sharia it seeks to protect and promote these essential values and all its necessary preservation measures. Yani theft, adultery, and the drinking of alcohol are prohibited as they did not conform to the fundamental objectives. On the other hand, the Sharia also encourages work and trading activities to enable the individual to earn a living. So Islam it came to preserve the life, to make sure that individuals are living in harmony, peace, and respecting one another. In Islam, it is against terrorizing people, committing acts on individuals, on people. So as we want to. As we want to uh, close up, inshallah, ta'ala, that Ibn Abbas reported that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, every pact from the time of ignorance, kullu hilfan kana fi jahiliyya lam yazid hu islam illa except the strength and affirmation. Mather, every pact from the time of ignorance is not increased by Islam. It is not increased by Islam except in strength and affirmation. And it is rated to be sahih. 
Tahara, he mentions, Rahimahullah, it is a pact such as the Hilful Fudul, in which they agreed not to help an oppressor over an oppressed person in Mecca. And this is during that time. So the classical scholars held that it is permissible for Muslims to cooperate and to seek help from the non-Muslims if there is a benefit in it and it involves no sin. In fact, the Prophet Wasallam told us a time will come when the Muslims will make peace with the Romans and cooperate against the common enemy. And Hassan ibn Atiyah reported the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Hassan ibn Atiyah Radi Allahu Anhu reported the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said You will make a secure peace with the Romans and together you will fight an enemy from behind you. And no Rahimahullahu Ta'ala he writes Will call that Shafi'iyu Wa Aqaruna in Kana Kafiru in Kana Kafiru Hassanan Ra'i Hassanan Ra'i Fi Muslimin Wa da'ati Wa da'ati hajatu ila isti'anati Illa mada isti'anata bihi Istu'inu Istu'ina bih Wa illa Wa illa Fakruha Wa illa Wa illa he says, Rahimahullah, a Shafi'i. And others said that if the disbelievers have good advice for the Muslims and there is a need for their help, then their help may be sought. Otherwise, it is disapproved. And you can find this in Shahar Sahih Muslim. So the scholars, they replied upon the evidence of many instances in the life of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, in which he sought the assistance of the non-Muslims. Ashokani rahimahallahu ta'ala, he writes, wa Abi Hanifa, wa ashabihi, Abu Hanifa and his companions, held that it is permissible to seek help from the disbelievers and sinners as long as they are adhering to the commands and prohibitions. They use as evidence that the Prophet Wasallam sought help from some people among the Jews. As mentioned, he sought the help of Safwan ibn Umayyah at the Battle of, at the battle of Hunayn, and he reported that an alliance would be made between the Muslims and the Romans in which they would together fight an enemy from behind the Muslims. And this Source you can find this in, in the Nihal, Nihal al Autar. So, therefore, we should investigate many different ways in which we can cooperate with non Muslims for a good cause. Today, our world is wracked by violence. From every direction, countless people live in grinding poverty, and our climate is threatened by pollution. So, these are issues that matter to all human beings regardless of their religion or they are or they matter their ideology as they put our as they put our collective future in danger so this is a benefit that we want to share of working together for a greater purpose of and weighing out the pros and the cons yani weighing the benefits over that which is harmful and cooperating with one another upon that which is good. Not compromising our deen, no, we're not saying that. We're not compromising our Islam to appease the disbelievers. We're not compromising our way of life. We're not compromising our tawheed, our aqidah. We're not compromising any of that, but rather we are working together upon that which is wholesome and good and the greater good of the society as a whole. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which we said. And if it was anything that I said that uh, a slip of the tongue or it was incorrect, it was from myself. And if it was a benefit, any good that came from this, it was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. We ask Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala for his safety and his security. And yani, fi kulli makan, in all places, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for the Muslims, to cure the Muslims, to protect the people of Palestine, to protect the Muslims of Palestine, to protect them and to aid them and support them. And we continue to make dua for them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not leave them alone for a blinking of an eye and to raise their status and to make them amongst those who have died as a shaheed bi ta'ala from amongst the men and the women and the babies who have been killed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for the Muslims in every time and, and in every uh, bilad and in all uh, villages and countries and cities. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.